your presence in this space is no mere coincidence. It's a meticulous and intentional connection designed to deliver the profound message of Apostle Joshua Selman directly to you. This message goes beyond being a mere source of blessings. It's a dynamic force, sparking the flame of greatness within you. Open your heart expansively and permit your mind to fully immerse in the opulence of this transformative diet. Before we venture further, I extend a sincere invitation for you to actively participate in this meaningful content. Engage. You will be a sign and a wonder. Honestly, you will be a living sign and a wonder. Listen, that men will sit down and your life will be a scripture that people will read out. They will marvel and wonder, how could God lift like this? How could God give wisdom like this? I pray it upon your life. May you be a sign and a wonder. You are part of a ministry that is a sign and a wonder. May that gene flow through your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to teach you how to derive profit from scripture. It's going to be a very interesting discussion. And whilst you are listening, something will fall upon you from heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. You will step into a greater comprehension of scripture with proof to show that your understanding is not fruitless. The spirit of revelation. The spirit of revelation. My focus tonight is to help us understand how to derive profit from scripture. Our world and the Christian community, the average Christian has a Bible in their house. Here's mine, upstage here. Most of us have us either in hard copy or electronic versions. And most believers are students of scripture. Most students, believers study. But it is very clear from our results and from our understanding that for the most part, the average believer has not been guided into the dynamics of de deriving profit from scripture hallelujah and if you are not taught about this mysterious book you see called the bible and how the spirit of revelation helps men to profit from scripture the bible will remain a burden to you that does not carry any profit it will remain a religious book or one of those historic monuments that you have around your life please i want you to pay attention i assure you that your destiny and your spiritual understanding depends on the light you are about to hear let's talk a bit about the bible while i was preparing my notes i just thought to spend a few minutes discussing this bible so that you understand a few things so let's do a bit of theology are you ready the Bible, as we know, is a collection of 66 books. This version of the Bible that we know. I wrote a few things here, and just let me read while you listen. The Bible is a collection of 66 books. There are 66 books recorded here, and 39 of them make up what we call the Old Testament. Say Old Testament. Don't worry, keep being childlike. Just say Old Testament. And the remaining 27... Uh, the New Testament. Of course, we know that there are other um, references. For instance, like the Roman Catholic Bible, there are a lot of other provisions beyond the 66 books. Just to mention them, I think in the Roman Catholic Bible is about 73 or so. There are a number of additions, um, books, particularly in the Old Testament, the Tobit, the Judith, first and second maccabees the siraj and on wisdom of solomon and so on and so forth and then of course in addition to the bible there are many other extra biblical materials the books of jasha the annals of the kings are we together the books of enoch and a lot of other materials but then we're dealing with the 66 books as we know are we together now the bible as we know from a historic standpoint the Bible was written by over 40 authors. At least 36 of them are mentioned as the authors of those Bibles. Now we know from theology and we know from Bible history 
that there were many other people that wrote the Bible and some books of the Bible uh, till date there's not been an agreement even among the rabbinical institutes there's not been an agreement as to who was the author of some of these books but just for you to know the Bible contains 66 books um, 39 Old Testament 27 the New Testament and then of course written by over 40 authors over a period of a thousand five hundred years amazing isn't it that from genesis at least as we know from the time the documentation started till the last the the distance the gap is about five one thousand five hundred years hallelujah now the bible tells us we i want us to look at a very interesting scripture i think it's a scripture that um has been a great blessing to many, but it's brought a lot of confusion. Second Timothy chapter 3, please. From verse 16. Second Timothy 3. I'm teaching on the spirit of revelation. Let's read together. Ready? One to read. Come on, read like people who have life, power, and hope. Ready? One to go. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Mm-hmm. For correction, for instruction in righteousness. Just stop at verse 16. So the Bible tells us, and as written in scripture, that all scripture is profitable. That's the word that I want us to see. That the Bible scripture is profitable. Now, let me explain to you what this means. And my discourse, as far as the Bible is concerned, will be trying to give you light if you do not understand what this means, you will never grow spiritually. Are we together? God prevailed upon the human authors of the Bible. Watch this now. God prevailed upon the authors of the Bible so that while using their own styles of writing and in spite of the differences in their understandings and their personalities they still recorded exactly what god intended are you understanding me now that in as much as the authors had different personalities they had different styles of writing some from a historic standpoint some from a, a poetic standpoint are we together some from an archaeological standpoint some a presentation of literature and it didn't matter what point the point here is that god prevailed over the human authors of the bible so that in spite of their styles of writing in spite of their level of understanding many times in scripture we see progressions in the understanding and the revelations of some of these authors the bible tells us that they were able to record as God intended. Now watch this. When the Bible says all scripture was inspired by God, I want to explain to you what that means and what that does not mean. The Bible was not dictated by God. No. When it says all scripture was inspired by God, it does not mean the Bible was dictated by God. It means it was guided and inspired by him. There were all kinds of authors in the Bible. Authors ranging from doctors, some of them, tax collectors, some of them, fishermen, some of them, shepherds, some of them, nomads, some of them, military people, some of them, kings, some of them, hedonistic people. In the Bible, donkeys spoke. In the Bible, Satan spoke. In the Bible, angels spoke. In the Bible, animals spoke. In the Bible, men spoke, sometimes before and after their encounter with God, like Paul, like um, um, who else? Abraham, an idol worshiper in awe of the Chaldeans, now becoming the father of many nations. Now, watch this. The central point of the Bible, listen, please, you have to listen. The central point of the Bible is God, his love for creation, man's fall, and his inadequacies, Jesus as the savior and only remedy, and then the gospel of salvation in its entire scope. It's a long read, but I'll take it again. 
that the central point of the Bible is God, his love for his creation, man's fall and inadequacies, Jesus as the savior and only remedy, and then the gospel and salvation in all its ramifications or the entire scope of it. One last time to give you the patience to write that the central point of the Bible is God, his love for his creation, man's fall and inadequacies, Jesus who came as savior and only remedy, and then the gospel and salvation in its entire scope. This is the central point of the Bible. Are we together? If you're following, say amen. amen. Now watch this. The accuracy of the Bible. I wrote it here and I want you to listen. The accuracy of the Bible is not in the flawlessness of its writings. Listen, please. The accuracy of the Bible is not in the flawlessness of its writings nor the personality of the authors but in its ability to deliver God's intent as far as the revelation of God Jesus man and salvation is concerned the accuracy of the Bible is not in the flawlessness of its writings that means when we say the Bible is accurate what makes the Bible accurate is not the flawlessness of the writings. Are we together? What makes the Bible accurate is not the dexterity of the personality of the writers. What makes the Bible accurate is its ability to deliver God's intent as far as the revelation of God, the revelation of Jesus, the revelation of man, and the revelation of salvation is concerned. So the Bible is only accurate if you look at it in its ability to reveal God, to reveal Jesus, to reveal man, and to reveal salvation. Now, you have that down? Is God working on your understanding? So when we say scripture is accurate, we are not saying scripture is accurate. In fact, let me just read this. I'm doing a bit of dictation. Be patient with me. The Bible I wrote here is not flawless as an archaeological material. No, it is not. As an archaeological material, it is not flawless. The Bible as a historic material is not flawless. The Bible as a capture of literature is not flawless there are many books for instance that were written even by the authors that wrote some of this book in the bible that were not captured there that alone already bends the wholesomeness of the bible from an archaeological or historic are we together standpoint there are 66 books that were canonized when you study bible history but Moses did not just write the first five books, for instance. Genesis down to Deuteronomy. They are not the only books Moses wrote. There were other books he wrote that did not make it in the Bible. So we are saying the accuracy of the Bible is not in its archaeological flawlessness. When you get an archaeologist to vet the Bible, he will find many things wanting as far as the presentations are there. When you get a historian to vet the Bible as a history book, are we together? He's going to find many things wanting there. When you vet the Bible as a capture of literature, many people will even edit it. Look at me. Have you found yourself reading scripture and you see certain words written in italics? Have you seen that? Do you know why it is written in italics? In Bible history, those writings were not part of the original manuscript. They were imported so that they will help give perspective to your understanding. Are we together? And most of those who did those additions were not necessarily believers. 
are we together now yes now when jesus and the plan of salvation becomes your compass watch this when jesus and the plan of salvation becomes your compass for navigating the scripture then it is accurate the accuracy of scripture in is in its ability to reveal god jesus man and salvation regardless the various authors so when you say the bible is accurate it is accurate because regardless the imperfections regardless the archaeological flaws historical flaws literature flaws are we together yes flaws in writings and interpretations when they were translated from greek hebrew aramaic latin down to english or whatever expression regardless it all those bends did not affect the purity of communicating the person of god the purity of communicating the person of jesus the purity of helping you understand man and the purity of the gospel and the plan of salvation this is very powerful mm. now when the bible says all scripture was inspired by god you understand what it means now because the attention of god in moving those men to write was not necessarily the accuracy of the statements written it is that in that in the statements that they wrote sufficient information was given there to help men know god to help men understand the state of man to help men know jesus christ and to help men understand the gospel and the plan of salvation if you navigate scripture using the lens of any other thing you will find a lot of inaccuracies hallelujah so settle it for a fact that the bible as an archaeological material is not flawless the bible as a historical material is not flawless the bible as a literary material a piece of literature is not flawless it is only when you bring the bible with respect to its ability to reveal god with respect to its ability to reveal jesus with respect to its ability to reveal the state of man and with respect to its ability to communicate the gospel and the plan of salvation that is where the accuracy of scripture lies believers are we learning now that means anybody who tries to study the bible and your lens is from any other thing and not the string of god jesus man salvation you will really not understand the bible in fact many things written there will annoy you are we together now you will see a plethora of disjointed statements and supposed controversial statements and at the end of it it will only plant debates and arguments in your spirit because you see the central reason for the arrival of the bible was still achieved and so every other imperfection in the mind of god does not matter provided the believer study scripture from the lens of the revelation of god the revelation of the state of man the revelation of jesus the revelation of the gospel and the plan of salvation this is what makes the bible a sacred material are we together now hmm. we're discussing the spirit of revelation that means if you use the bible as a prosperity book alone there are many things you will find wanting when you read the book when you open the bible watch this and you read it as a marriage counseling book alone you may find many things you may not agree with if you open the bible and read it as a career book alone you will find many things wanting because the idea when the spirit of god brought the authors the goal is not that it just solves every problem arbitrarily the central focus is to help you know god help you know jesus help you understand the state of man and help you understand salvation are we together now there are times that you watch movies and in those movies there are other parts that you wonder why they were added in the movie 
Are we together? They are there. You can't take them away. They add spice to the movie board. There is usually a central theme around it. Is that true? And so if you want to understand the movie, you keep your gaze on the starring actors and what is happening. All the things that happen on the side, you don't lose focus of it. Are we together? Yes. The reason why many believers do not understand scripture is because they do not understand how scripture should be studied. There is a true north, just for want of word. There is a central navigation system by which you understand scripture. If you approach scripture isolating the revelation of God, isolating the revelation of the state of man, isolating the revelation of Jesus, isolating the revelation of the gospel and salvation, the Bible will be a compendium of confusion. You will never be able to find the accuracy there. I repeat, therefore, that the accuracy of scripture is not in its archaeological flawlessness. The, accu the, the accuracy of scripture is not in its, his, in fact, is not even in its intellectual flawlessness. There are many things that if you study in scripture intellectually, it will not add up. And yet this is the Bible recommended to reveal God. Hmm. Are we together? Now, let me answer one question before we go to the spirit of revelation. If the Bible is centrally focused on God, man's condition, Jesus as the remedy, the gospel and salvation in its entirety, the question now becomes, can a believer use the Bible to study other aspects of human issues? Are we together? If the Bible is centered on God, man's state, Jesus, the gospel and salvation, can I use the Bible to solve other issues in life? The answer is in that same scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. All scripture is profitable. How many? All scripture. Including the things that look like nonsense in the Bible. The Bible says under a certain condition, they can become profitable. All scripture. The reason why in spite of the limitations and the imperfections of the Bible, you don't need to throw them out is because there is a provision by God to make all scripture profitable for you. Are we together? Watch this. While Jesus walked upon the earth, I hope you know that Jesus came as the word. While Jesus walked upon the earth, his focus was salvation. Am I right? Yet, he taught on other aspects of human life. Jesus did not just come and focus on salvation alone. His ultimate focus was salvation, revealing God to men and becoming that mediator becoming that substitute in death. However, in the course of his sojourn on earth, the Bible is clear as to the fact that Jesus addressed various issues around human life. That means it is wise to conclude that even though the Bible is centrally focused on the revelation of God, man, Jesus, and salvation, the Bible is also profitable as a spiritual resource that can help man navigate through all the issues in life and destiny. But the issue is that it does not happen under all conditions. We are discussing the spirit of revelation. Hallelujah. Jesus taught on marriage. Jesus taught on relationships. Jesus taught on finance, extensively so. Jesus taught on diligence. Jesus taught on greatness and the price of greatness. Jesus taught on forgiveness and empathy. Jesus taught on leadership. Jesus taught on politics. Are you seeing the other areas? Now, these areas were not directly connected to the core assignment, yet they were captured in his discourse. The Bible does not hide the fact that he met a tax collector. They discuss economic issues. He discussed the issues of giving. Jesus discussed the issue of marriage and the complexities around marriage. They asked him questions. He did not run away from it. Are we together? Jesus discussed the issue of laziness. He gave parables that were not connected to salvation at all. They were parables that dealt with human living. It is safe to consider, therefore, that the Bible, even though centrally, 
it is meant to reveal God. I repeat again, the state of man to reveal Jesus as the remedy and to help man understand the gospel. It is also wise to allow the Bible to be extended to solve every other problem in human life. Mm. Hallelujah. Are we learning so far? Do you understand everything I just said? Now, let's discuss the spirit of revelation. Ephesians 1 verse 17. Listen to me. You have to read the Bible as a spiritual man to profit from it. Even if you are reading about business, even if you are reading about marriage, even if you are reading about relationships, if you read the Bible as an intelligent intellectual, you will find many gaps. If you read the Bible entirely as a businessman, the Bible demands that there must be a state you assume for the profit of it to be derived. Are we together now? The Bible was designed to profit men to the degree to which they are spiritually minded as they read. The Bible says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, a businessman can open the Bible and read it and find valuable business lessons. But eventually, as you sojourn, you will find things that don't make sense and will not add up. Are we together? If you are a marriage counselor and you open the Bible looking for ideas, you will find valuable ideas that appeal to the intellect. But eventually, you will find confusing statements. If you read the Bible just as any other person who is not spiritual, it will profit you for a while. But one day you will stumble across thoughts, statements, ideas, expressions, stories, and personalities that will trouble and disturb your understanding. So, Ephesians 1 and verse 17, Paul for you, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, watch this, and the Father of glory may give unto you, I hope you know he's speaking to people who are already born again, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Next verse, he says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, ye may know the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power now please lend me your attention again every story in the bible contains within it listen every story in the bible in fact, it is even safe to say every statement and every expression in the Bible contains within it lessons or principles that can cause the believer to walk in victory. Did you get that? Every statement, every story, every expression in the Bible contains within it lessons or principles that can help the believer to walk in victory. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. The Bible says in Romans 15 and verse 4. Whatsoever things were written. It didn't matter what it was. Even if it is statistics. Even if it is the statements that Satan made. Even if it is the statement that demons made. Whatsoever were written aforetime. Provided they were written in this book. The Bible says there is profit from them. You either have a lesson to learn from them or you have a principle to derive from them. Are you learning how to profit from scripture? Otherwise, why would you read in the Bible statements that Satan made? How does that profit you? Why would you read in the Bible statements that hedonistic people wrote? Why would it profit you? The Bible would have just edited statements that only Jesus said or only born again people said. Yet, the Bible is not afraid to scatter through its pages. Sometimes disturbing writings. Men cause God in the depravity of their minds and it was recorded in the Bible. So when the Bible says all scripture is inspired, 
it is not the accuracy of the statement that was inspired is the fact that God God insisted that that statement no matter how insulting or no matter how glorifying it is that it should be written that is why he did not leave you to read the scripture alone there is a provision he gave you a lens from which you can read any scripture and derive profit from it the name of that provision is the spirit of revelation the spirit of revelation is the profit factor in the believers learning scripture that when you engage scripture from the lens of the spirit of revelation any verse will profit you are we together you will find very disturbing scriptures in the bible like a lying spirit departed from god and came to saul and that statement is inconsistent with god's character at least we learn God by looking at the person Jesus. Jesus never lied. He was full of grace and truth. So we have a right to say something was wrong with the people who wrote that statement. Either they are hearing because they were human, they are receiving. Yet all scripture, including that ins insulting statement, was inspired by God to be written. Are we together? It is not the insult that God said to write. That means the insult itself does not profit. It does not profit by default. You don't insult God and it is profiting. But it was written there because there is a lesson that can be derived from it that will help you to live a profitable life. I always wondered why certain statements were written. If you have read your Bible properly from Genesis to Revelation and you are sincere, you should have been disturbed. You get to Songs of Solomon, you will jump it quickly and go to the next verse. You get to Leviticus, you are almost feeling sleepy. What in the world is this? Why do I need that for? You get to the book of Proverbs, the first three or four chapters just insults you. It's like a man slapping you. And you are wondering, what in the world is this? You get to the book of Revelation, you are scared to death. You want to quit your job. What sort of a compendium? What was God about? Writing all those statements. And this vile and this beast, he sat on a horse, he judged the nations, people were roasted with fire. How does that encourage me? All scripture were inspired. Koinonia, are you learning now? It was not the events that were inspired. It was not the accuracy of the speakings that were inspired. But they were captured together because God would never let you learn them alone. He was going to give you the spirit of revelation and the spirit of revelation is the one who guides you into all truth that means not everything is truth but everything is written not everything is truth did you hear what i said not everything is truth but everything is written <laughs> not everything is truth but everything is written so the holy spirit guides you through the stories through both the sense and nonsense and brings you to the point of scripture where you find truth it is the reason why you can read a book and see a verse that may not have made sense but because the breath of the spirit comes upon that verse you learn a lesson for instance you read the book of ecclesiastes if you read it intellectually you hate the bible because you would think it is saying you should not walk you should not do anything here was the frustration of the preacher he said here is the conclusion of the matter of reading many books there is no end and much study is a weariness to the flesh he says this is the conclusion of the matter fear God and keep his commandments and said this is the whole duty of man so should I resign from my job as a result of this threat <laughs> so it means I should not press to increase all scripture you read that thing intellectually you will come up with errors and credit it to God and God says I have no hand in it I never ask you to read it intellectually or just historically you read all of those things as a build up while waiting for the spirit of revelation to sieve through the limitations and the personalities of those who wrote it and bring life to you the sun will no more give you sunlight by day the moon will no more give you moonlight by night Jehovah will be your everlasting I like that one Jehovah will be your everlasting light Jehovah will be your everlasting light 
listen listen can i tell you many preachers many businessmen many intellectuals have been frustrated reading the bible and it's just that sometimes we keep quiet so that it doesn't look like we hate god but there are many people who are tired of reading a string of controversies in the scripture and sometimes they get embarrassed that certain things should be written in scripture are we together look at certain explicit statements for want of word that were written in books like sons of solomon look at certain i mean the bible said perfect love cast out fear but you read the book of revelation and see from beginning to the end read it in amplified <laughs> by the time you are halfway that book you will be shaking physically will any man survive if god did not stay this play for this plague for the sake of the elect ah that means it, are there people who will survive this it is easier for a uh, how does he put it for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle what is the meaning of that? That means I'm going to hell? <laughs> Ye err, not knowing the scriptures. See that? It says, search the scriptures. For in them you think you will find life. The scriptures testify of me. The scripture was not written for historians. The scripture was not written for archaeologists. The scripture was not written for um, English speaking people or any language. The scripture was written for spiritual people. There is a capture of all of these dimensions, but that in themselves, they cannot profit the believer. That is the reason why you can read a lot of things and even teach it, but the result that follows does not come because light has not come. Are we together? What profits you is not the verse. What profits you is the light. Did you hear what I said? what profits you is not the story what profits you is not the personality used what profits you is not the dexterity of the expression what profits you is the light hmm. and the spirit entered me when he spoke unto me i needed to hear him but beyond the words so the bible says the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him i tell you many believers do not have revelation knowledge and many believers do not know that the study of scripture and the profiting of scripture is beyond the realm of archaeology, is beyond the realm of history. Because there is a mystery to this book you are seeing. As opened as it is, there are seals in the spirit. It is your responsibility to open the book, but only the spirit of revelation can unlock the seals. Otherwise, you will only read a a, a plethora of disjointed statements that will cause confusion to you fear doubts hear what the bible says that was the true light that lighted upon every man there are false lights they carry a semblance of power they carry a, but they cannot they don't have the potency to deliver the life of god Are we together? Spirit. Why did Jesus take the time? Do you know that most of his activity when he walked upon the earth, even beyond his crusades and conferences, most of his time was spent in his teaching ministry. And yet he told the people that the Holy Spirit was still going to come. In spite of the fact that I taught you profitably, there is still the paraclete. There were many things Jesus taught that they did not understand. My question is, how will Jesus teach you and yet you don't understand? Who else should teach? How does this? There were many things he said that they did not understand. After his resurrection, they recall some statements and say, so this is what he meant. Do you know why? Because they were bankrupt of the spirit of revelation. Jesus himself not a prophet he was the one who personally taught them but they were unfruitful in many areas to the point that the bible says he opened their understanding that they might understand scripture but when the spirit of god came many things began to make sense to them oh destroy this temple and i'll build it in three days hear the foolish interpretation of that scripture when jesus stood before herod this man said he would destroy our temple he was talking about his body 
Are we together? They said you are a king. Are you a king? And Pontius Pilate said, don't you know I have the power to release you? And he said, ah, 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 ah. even though I'm silent, now you've said something. You do not have any power. No man can have power except it is given to him. It is within my power to command a legion of angels. Jesus was speaking from a realm. Why was he silent? Are you seeing that those guys were interpreting all the materials? The scribes and the Pharisees, in terms of accuracy of scriptural memory, none of us till date in this generation, I presume, has the kind of intellectual prowess those people had. For you to be a Pharisee, among the many conditions, you needed to understand the entire Torah of heart. And yet, the one who the scripture said would come was before them and they could not see him. Are we learning? The spirit of revelation. Now watch this. Every story in the Bible, every statement in the Bible, every expression in the Bible whether directly connected to salvation or not whether directly connected to the revelation of jesus or not whether directly connected to the revelation of god or not under the influence of the spirit of revelation every story in the bible can bring forth lessons and can bring forth principles that cause the believer to walk in victory did you hear what i said the profiting of scripture only comes under the influence of the spirit of revelation please write that down the profiting of scripture only comes is only derived under the influence of the spirit of revelation brain plus bible study may only profit you so far you will not be at a loss but the holistic profiting intended for you will not be achieved it is under the influence of the Spirit of God that the profiting of Scripture is derived. So when the Bible says all Scripture is profitable, it did not lie. Including all the disturbing statements that are surrounded in the Bible. They are not controversies per se. They are controversies if approached historically. They are controversies if approached intellectually. They are controversies if approached just um, in terms of uh, maybe history and literature. But the moment you come under the spirit of revelation, veils are taken away. And you will see things the way it was intended to be seen. Son of man, what seest thou? And he said, the root, the shoot of an almond tree. He says, thou has seen correctly. Means you can see wrongly. You don't have to be blind to see wrongly. Once you are not guided, you will see wrongly. Are we together? Yeah. One time Jesus prayed for a man and his eyes opened. But he saw men like trees. And he laid his hands upon his eyes again. And it opened and he saw things clearly. Now, let's talk about the four assignments of the spirit of revelation. The spirit of revelation has a fourfold assignment in the life of the believer with respect to helping the believer derive profit from scripture and to live an excelling Christian life. Let me repeat myself again, that the spirit of revelation as a dimension of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit has a fourfold assignment in the life of the believer with respect to helping you derive profit from scripture and living an overall excellent spiritual experience are you ready number one the first assignment of the spirit of revelation and i hope you know by now that the spirit of revelation is a dimension of the operation of the holy spirit just like every other expressions of the spirit it is one spirit but is that he he has compartments and dimensions of his operation and one of those dimensions is that he can operate as the spirit of revelation the assignment of the spirit of revelation listen is number one to give you light from scripture write it down the first assignment of the spirit of revelation is to breathe upon scripture breathe upon the bible and cause that regardless what you are studying, you will find light 
Light meaning lessons. Light meaning mysteries. Light meaning principles from it that help you know God, help you understand his eternal plan, but then also helps you to live an excelling spiritual life. The element of the spirit of revelation is to give you light. So you can come as a historian, it's not wrong. You can come as an intellectual, it is not wrong. The Bible does not demand that you throw away your brain nor your knowledge of archaeology history. In fact, the knowledge of those areas aforementioned even become a, a great support system when the Spirit of God breathes upon you. Are we together? When the Holy Spirit breathes upon you, then all those other things now add to its profiting. History is not wrong in studying scripture. That's why we learn. We have lexicons, Greek and Hebrew lexicons. We have all kinds of commentaries that we add together as we study scripture. It takes intellect to study those things. They give you contextual backgrounds. Are we together? There is what we call in theology the principles of biblical interpretation. That means how you interpret scripture for your profiting. That is an intellectual guide. But it is profitable. That is where you learn things like the law of first mention. You learn the things like the law of single mention. Are we together? The factors that must be in place for any thought to be called doctrine. Not everything in the Bible is doctrine. Even though everything is profitable. Comes from the Latin word doctrina. A body of knowledge that transforms a student to be as excellent as his master. Are we together? Are we learning? church is quiet this is koinonia mm. so the assignment of the spirit of revelation is to give you light from scripture you can carry your bible and read for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him john 3 16 should not perish but have everlasting life you will stand there brilliant but confused. What did I do that he died for me? Did I ask him to die for me? Did he have to die? How does a creator have to die to save those he created? That is an expression of weakness. Are you seeing the limitations of intellect? He gave his one and only son. Put it there please. If you read the Bible like that, the first question is, he gave his one and only son. By which wife? By what mother? You see what is happening to your mind? <laughs> Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What is everlasting life? How does it change me? I am all right. If you are poor, it may make sense. What if you are rich? What is everlasting life? I'm staying in a palace. I have a private jet. I have the, what is everlasting life? How does that add to me? I have a PhD. I have an excellent life. Things are working well. How, what is everlasting life? Why do I need it? Because I look at my life and I do not see anything wrong with my life that necessitates the need for any life. I have friends with military. I have friends with the law enforcement agents. I have friends with the legal institution. What is everlasting life? That would be your conclusion if the spirit of revelation does not help you. But when he opens your eyes, the first thing you will see is so loved so loved all those controversies fade immediately the spirit of revelation will guide your heart to the punchline of that statement so loved god so loved and every other verse and statement will just disappear and there will only be three words striking your spirit god so loved god so loved you will not know when you will break down over that scripture and begin to weep this is what he did so loved so loved that can birth an evangelical ministry because that when you stand on a crusade ground the only thing you will hear is God so loved and you can begin to weep like the patriarchs who wept and we did not understand the basis of their crying they were not people who were driven by arguments I was watching one of the documentaries of late Billy Graham and he was having um, a discussion with he was going for a, a, a you know a crusade somewhere and they were having I think a radio or a session with the journalist and the rest and they asked him a very serious question they said how are we sure that your crusade here is not just to come and manipulate people into subscribing to a faith 
that they do not agree with. And he looked and smiled and made a very profound statement. He said, my message is a proclamation. I am proclaiming something that has been done. My, it's, a, it's a message I was sent to proclaim. I am only a messenger. My assignment is not to explain the dynamics of what happened. I am proclaiming what was done, but that in that message there is the power to heal the total man. I said, this is an evangelist indeed. He conquered nations because the spirit of revelation was upon him. So loved and you're standing there and the, the healing anointing can flow through that revelation god so loved that crippled man there god so loved the blind mama at the back of that crusade ground god so loved the stubborn drunkard that came to that crusade ground and rather than being judgmental and being angry because the spirit of god has made scripture to be profitable compassion is the response are we are, are we saying now so while on one hand what you are seeing is a controversy. What is eternal life? Another person is seeing God so loved. And from that, these three statements, a global ministry can rise that represents the purposes of God. The first assignment of the spirit of revelation is to help you derive light from scripture. The light component of scripture is what empowers you to become what scripture says. The light component from scripture is what empowers you to become what scripture says. Now I understand some of the statements of our fathers where they would say just head knowledge. Men like E.W. Kenyon, Kenneth Hagin of blessed memory. They would say faith is not mental ascent. Are we together? No, it is not mental ascent. Absorbing the truth intellectually is profitable, but not enough to make you become what it says. As many as received him, he gave them power. When you receive that word, power is derived from it that helps you to become. Power to become. Power to become. Power to become. Power to become a saved person. Power to become a transformed person. I am confident that the sermons you've immersed yourself in have served as a wellspring of blessings, uplifting your life and instilling a profound commitment to wholeheartedly serve God. We extend a warm invitation for you to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel. By activating the notification bell, you ensure that you remain connected and never miss any of our upcoming videos. Your subscription signifies more than a mere click. It represents a pledge to continual spiritual growth, enlightenment, and empowerment. Embark on this faith-filled journey with us as our channel aspires to be a haven for both spiritual seekers and devoted believers. We ardently believe in the transformative power of God's Word, and our objective is to share messages that deeply resonate with your soul. Join our community, subscribe, and allow the radiant light of divine wisdom to illuminate your path. We express our gratitude for your integral role in this uplifting journey, and we pray that God's abundant blessings overflow in your life. Amen. Stay connected with us on all our social media platforms at Flaming Channel and feel free to explore our website at www.flamingchannel.com. Thank you and may God abundantly bless you.